Workflow is an extension of the due date system that allows you to break down a main task, such as an audit or monthly bookkeeping work, into subtasks. Workflow allows you to assign individual elements of a main task to different staff, along with individual columns for due date, assigned date, in process, and completed dates. Other information such as budgeted hours and subtask notes can also be tracked. If you implement the budgeted hours, you have the ability to roll up to a staff utilization report, which we'll demonstrate shortly. Staffing changes can optionally cascade through recurring main tasks. The completion of a main task can be based upon either a hierarchical or independent model. Hierarchical models imply that the steps performed are sequential in nature rather than concurrent. For example, a tax return usually follows a sequential process, whereas during an audit, multiple subtasks may be in process at the same time. Okay, that's a quick overview. Now let's look at some details. I've gone into the Manage Edit Deadline screen, and I've filtered for three different types of tasks, 1120s, an IRS notice, and monthly bookkeeping work, which is a recurring task. This should let us demonstrate what you can do with subtasks. Our first task, the 1120, is for all rise, robes, and tassels. And we have three steps. FOL prepares the return. He should complete the work by February 29th, even though the due date for the main task is March 15th. We assigned it to him in the middle of February. He began on the 18th, and he completed the subtask on March 1st. And we can glance at the budget versus actual and see that his total budget is seven hours and he's actually recorded nine so far. So there's a negative variance. Next, we can see that JJP is reviewing this work. He completed that on March 5th and then uh, yet to be completed is the final packaging. Now, if I complete that today, that's packaged on uh, March 10th, 2012, this will go ahead and complete the main task. This is a hierarchical task, so once the last step is completed, it completes the main work, and now as a due date tracking item, it's considered to be complete. Let's take a look at a different kind of task so you can get an idea of the variety of steps that are involved in different types of tasks. An IRS notice, you might obtain the documents, do a client conference, and respond to the IRS. Now, these particular subtasks are set up for each main task, 1120. IRS notice is down here, and I've assigned it this step, this subtask description. And the subtask description tells me that under the subtask tab right here, that these are the steps for the 1120, these are the steps for an audit, and here are the steps for the IRS notice. These are things that you can customize for your firm. You're not required to use ours. We just give you some suggestions. I wanted to also show you a recurring task like monthly bookkeeping. There are 12 of them for this year. And uh, if I wanted to change an assignment uh, from FOL, say to Diane, it would offer to cascade that change for the entire 12 items, or if I answer no, to change it for that one month only. So I went ahead and cascaded it. So if I look on all the items here, that DM is now doing the assembly of the information. I've changed the filter set to show 1120s and 1120s's that are coming due in the first quarter of 2012. You can see the default due date up here. Notice as I navigate on the right side that the details of that individual item appears on the left. This shows you how for example, 1120S is we've used a traditional kind of sequence of steps for tax returns, including the e-file steps and so on. Whereas on our 1120s, it's very abbreviated. We just prepare, review, and package. Again, giving you an example of the flexibility inherent with the subtask system. Now I'd like to show you how we can report on this data, these five main tasks, by clicking the Report Copy tab. It's going to inherit the current filter, and I've elected to do the Detail Tracking History Report, showing budget and actual detail, and also notes. I'm going to run that report. I can group it by staff, partner, variety of groupings and sorts. Let's run it. Okay, and what we can see here is that for this 1120, 
These are the steps, and that's the budget and actual hours for the work. It also shows all the same information we had on the screen. This particular item is completed. Again, the next item hasn't really been started. We go to the next page, and we can see that 2011 1120S looks different because we performed different steps for that. Now, that, of course, in real life, you probably have the same steps for an 1120 as you would for an 1120S, except maybe for the calculation of estimated taxes. But you have the flexibility to find different steps. With the workflow module, the deadline notification screen is where the rubber meets the road. It's here where you can show specific subtask responsibilities for a particular staff person. And that staff person can note that they're in process, completed. They can make detailed notes about a task. If you have our time entry system, they can also record their time here. There's a button right here that appears adjacent to the notes button. They can see their current assignments, the upcoming assignments that uh, need to be started in the next 90 days. Here we have two past two deadlines. And what are the upcoming deadlines? If they complete something and you permit them to mark it complete, they can update the task right from in here. This keeps them out of the more potent manage edit deadline screen. Although you can circumscribe their permission set that uh, would still allow them to be in this screen, we recommend that basic staff people use the deadline notification screen. It, it tells everything about their work, the complete step. They can print a report of their current subset of things so they can take that home with them. These filters up here limit the period of time that you're going to look forward for start and uh, deadline dates. So basically these tabs are tabs when I should start things and tabs when things are coming due. If you're proactive, you're going to assign start dates to subtasks, giving the staff heads up, you need to start this now in order to complete this on time. So this tab here, current assignments and assignments upcoming, work with the due date tab, the deadlines that are due today, and the upcoming deadlines based upon these forward-looking parameters that you set here. If you've set everything up properly and you use our time system, there's a powerful staff utilization report that's available right here in the menu. And I've entered the uh, month of March. So what we're looking for here is how uh, heavily budgeted is FOL for the month of March. So we click display graph. We can also print this in a report. And this shows an eight hour day. And we can see that he doesn't really have all of his time budgeted. There's room for more work. That after the season is over, uh, we can go back and reflect on what actually happened. And we can show the recorded time as well. So here we have the recorded time in red and the budgeted time. So we can see he put in quite a bit more time than was budgeted. This can also be printed in a report format. Very useful for telling you uh, what your projection of work is. You know, oftentimes what we see is that the staff people that are most efficient get budgeted for too much work in the upcoming tax season or for the next quarter. And this utilization report gives you the ability to uh, see if you've made mistakes and you need to redistribute the work. So that's in essence what the workflow is about, budgeting the work out, assigning it to detailed staff, and allowing you more control over the processes within which your firm functions. We hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you want to find out more information about it, please call 877-520-1525, or go to our website, www.imaginetime.com, and download the trial.